if you're using MIDI virtual instruments in your GarageBand iOS tracks, either using a MIDI keyboard or the touch screen here, sometimes you may find that you can't play the whole part just at once or one track. So what do you do? Well, you use multiple tracks and then you join them together. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And when you're using MIDI tracks, you've got a lot of control. So when you are trying to play a part, whether it's a drum track or a keyboard track, you can use this join function to make sure that you can actually get the performance you want without necessarily having to perform it all at once. So let's jump in to GarageBand here on the iPhone and show you what I mean. What you're talking about, Pete? Well, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here we are in the drums. I'm gonna tap on acoustic drums and we have our SoCal drum kit here. Sounds a bit like that. Now, what I'm gonna do here, first thing I like to do with drums is come into my settings here, go to track settings, and I'm gonna drop the velocity sensitivity. In fact, I'm gonna turn it completely off for this example, just so we don't have any hits that don't register properly on my touch screen. I'm then gonna come into my tempo, and because I use 110 for all my examples, let's up this to maybe 140, have a little bit more of a rock beat. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you how we can record a drum section or a drum part in three different parts, and then use the join function to bring these together. So let's do just the kick drum to start, with. Let's hit record. So there's our kick drum pattern. We'll come back to our track view. There it is there. Now what we can do is we'll tap on this drum. We will go duplicate. And in fact, let's tap and duplicate again. So we've got all three of our tracks. Now I'm gonna lay down my snare track. So you can see what we're doing here. Instead of having to play the whole kit at once, we can play piece by piece, build our sound together. And then in the end, if and when we want to, we can join them back together. So let's hit record now. Okay, we kind of doubled up there on the kick drum there. I forgot I forgot the kick pattern that I used, but that's okay. The idea here is just to show you what we can do, not to make the perfect drum track. So let's go to our third one here. Let's add in some hi-hat and maybe a crash cymbal here at the end. Okay, there we have it. So you can see here really quickly, we can build up a drum pattern here without having to really go to a lot of effort or to use multiple fingers to get ourselves confused. If we play all these together, they sound like this. So not bad, we'll turn off that metronome, we don't need that anymore. Now here's where the magic happens. Now the, the first thing I'll say here is you can leave these completely separate. And in fact, what you can do is you can do some pretty funky stuff with panning, you can move your drums around to different parts and you can process each drum separately. So if you've checked out any of my videos about plugins and EQs and compressors and all the rest of it, you can actually use the drums like this and then use a different compression setting or a different EQ setting on your kick drum, your snare. You can basically treat it like a real kit that's actually actually be mic'd up on, on the different pieces. So that is one way to go. But if you want simplicity and you want to have one drum track that you can then bring together and edit and save yourself some tracks, here's how we do it. So we need to select all three of these. So to do that, we tap and hold on the first one and then tap the other two with a different finger so that they're all highlighted. We now tap on the first one again, tap again, and we hit join. Now what happens when we tap join is that it joins all three of those tracks together into the one drum track. So if we press play now, And there is our drums all on the one track. Now, if we had different types of drums and different types of sounds here, as long as they're all the same type of MIDI track, we can join them together, but they will only go to whichever is the top one in what you're joining. And to give you a demonstration of that, let's now do some keyboards here. So if we go add, let's come across to our keyboard. We're gonna just tap on the keyboard. I can't remember what sound I had here. It's the uh, soft analog synth, I think. Yep, there it is. Soft analog synth. So let's just record four bars of a synth sound here and then a different sound and I'll show you what I mean. So 
So there is a four bar recording of our synth. And now what I'm gonna do is we'll come in here, we'll add again, we'll go more sounds. Let's now grab keyboards and let's just grab our electric piano here. And let's just go down a bit and just record a bit more of a bassy sort of sound on this one. We'll hit record. So there we go, we've got our two sounds on two separate tracks here. Now, you probably wouldn't want to join these together, so a little bit of a bad example, but if we play these two together like this. Okay, it doesn't sound absolutely terrible. So what if we wanted to now bring all of these notes up onto this soft analog synth? Well, we use the same method. We tap, tap and hold, tap the next one, and then tap the top one again, tap it again, and hit join. Now it's put both of those tracks up, and again, it's chosen the topmost instrument to put all of these onto. Let's hit play. And there you see, we've got the two parts on one track. Now this is really cool. I've used this a lot for piano. If you've got a bass part of a piano and the, the right hand playing a melody part, you don't need to record those at the same time. If you're a, a struggling pianist or like myself, then you don't need to actually record them at the same time. You can record them separately and then merge them or join them together after the fact. So that is going to do it for this video. There's a whole bunch of other things you can do. You can really see that there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of things that you can do with this merge and join function here in GarageBand. I hope you found this interesting and I hope you can use this in your future projects. There's one final thing that I'm going to show you here before we go and that is that you can do a similar thing. I know that some folks will, will let me know about this as well that we can actually come in here and go to our track settings and go to recording and we can use merge recordings. If we turn merge recordings on and then we record it will do the same function but it will add to this. So let's just show you a really quick example example of that. There you go. I don't know what I was playing there or why, but you can see the problem here is it actually overlaps. So you then, if you wanted to edit, you'd have to come in here and find which notes are which. So I prefer the method that I've used, but you do, if you do want to use merge recordings, you have that function and I'll perhaps cover that in more detail in a future video, but that is going to do it for now. I hope you found this useful. And there you go, my kids are clearly excited about this feature as well. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, you can leave those down below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. There are two more videos linked right down below that you can check out. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon over there in the top right corner or head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness. My hat was crooked. <laughs>